Yes, I have uh, uh, one question about the uh, sati and uh, samata and the uh, vipassana. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And uh, uh, kayana pasi and beta uh, nan pasi is uh, samata. Mm -hmm. And uh, chitta vipassana, uh, chitta nupasi. Chitta nupasana, chitta nupasana. Uh, chitta nupasana and uh, so let me clear again. There are two terms, Samatha and Vipassana. Yes. Samatha means uh, sam the word samat has uh, come from the root samana. Samana means to remove or to destroy. And samat is uh, by which all the uh, defiling factors of our minds are being removed or destroyed. So in technical sense, samat is the name of rupa jhan and arupa jhan. There are two terms, Samadhi. We have already discussed Samadhi and Dhyan also. There are two terms. Samadhi in Pali, it is also called as Samadhi. But Dhyan in Sanskrit, it is called as Jhan. Jhan is that Jhapiti Ti Jhanam. That concentration or Jhan is that which burns Jhapiti or extinguishes the defiling factors. In that sense, suppose there is a fire and this fire is being destroyed or you can say removed. This is called as Samana or Samatha. So here we have heard the name of Nivarnaj. Nivarnaj or it is called as a, a in English, it is called as hindrances. Hindrances are those immoral factors which put obstacle in the path of concentration. They are five in number. That is the Kama Chand, Vyapad, Thinimid, Udaj, Kukuch, and Pichikitsha. So there are five types of Nivarnas. It has been defined in Pali, Nivaranti, Paryondhinti, Nachittam, Samadhitam, Iti, Nivarnam. Means, Nivarnas are those immoral factors which put obstacle in the path of concentration or samadhi. The, that is the kama chand, that is the sensual pleasure, desire for sensual pleasure. Kama chand, vyapad, that is the antipathy or hatred. Vyapado ti doso, doso ti par vinas chintaye, desire to harm others is called as vyapad. Third is called as Thin mid. Idleness related with the consciousness is called as thin, and idleness related with our psychic factor or mental factors is called as mid. Chitasa akalleta ti thinam, chet sikasa akalleta ti midham. The fourth is udhach kukuch. There are two words. Udhach means that brooding of mind from one place to another place. This is called as udhach, destruction of the mind. It's called as udhach. In Sanskrit, it is called as auditriya. Iti tato dhavanam ti udhachyam. That what our mind roams from one place to another place. This is called as udhach. Second is the kukuch. Kukuch means that what should be done and what should not be done. This type of thinking is called as kukuch. That Brooding over of mind, that is called as katanu katanam socharam ti kukucham. What should be done and what should not be done. And the last is called as abhijja, that is the, uh, this is called as ignorance. Abhijja is the name of not knowledge of the Four Noble Truth, not knowledge of love conditionality, not knowledge of our love dependent originations, not knowing the 10 types of precepts. This is called as ignorance. 
in another way ignorance or avijja is the name of that it has the characteristics to cover the nature of the reality that whenever we do not know the nature of the reality that all things are subject to impermanence all things are subject to suffering and all dhammas are subject to soulless this is called as avijja for removal of these five factors or five nivarnas there are called as jhanam factors of concentrations they are five in number bitak bichar piti sukh and ekagrata there are five types of factors of the concentration and there are five jhanas also that is the bitak bichar piti sukh ekta saitam patham jhanam bichar piti sukh ekta saitam dutiya jhanam piti sukh ekta saitam tatiya jhanam sukh ekta saitam chaturth jhanam and upekka ekagrata iti pancham jhanam so these are called as five antidotes for the removal of the five types of nivarnas namely kamachand vyapar tinimid udras pukuch and vichikitsha this is called as rupajhan or rupajhan is the name of the concentration on the objects which do not have any form and color arup when there is a concentration of the object which do not have any form and color this is called as arupajhan arupajhan is the name of there are four types of akasha chaitan biyan chaitan akincha aitan nev sanya na sanya aitan so the name of the rup samadhi and arup samadhi is called as samatha that is the coming down of mind samadhi is the when our the hindrances which put obstacle in the path of concentrations they are being removed and our mind becomes calm down it is you can say serene this it has become very much calm then it is called as samatha there is another term vipassana vipassana there are two words v and pass v means vishesh prakarena that is the special way pasati means visualizing the visualizing the things what is the that is the visualizing visualizing the things the nature of the reality that all things are subject to impermanence all things are subject to suffering and all dhammas are subject to soulless anicca dukkha and anatta so it vipassana has, has been defined as anicca adi vishesh prakare na pasati iti vipassana that vipassana is the name of visualizing the things of the nature of the reality that all things are subject to impermanence all things are subject to suffering and all dhammas are subject to soulless this is called as vipassana vipassana is achieved through the paiya paiya means right understanding it has another name of samadhi or right understanding or right vision this is the name of that is knowledge of the four noble truth knowledge of the uh, eight fold path knowledge of conditionality knowledge of uh, law of dependent origination this is samvik drishti or samadhi or right vision and in samadhi sutta it has been defined in a very detailed manner that uh, one who knows the kusala kusala mula one who knows the akusala and akusala mula and one who knows the four noble truth one who knows the ahar ahar samuday ahar nirodh ahar nirodh gamri pratipada and one who knows the law of dependent origination and one who knows the asav asav samuday asav nirodh asav nirodh gamri pratipada he is in the position of right vision or samadhi so this is the through the paiya a person visualizes things that all things are sabbe sankhara nichati jadai paiyai pasati ath nibandite dukhe samagho bisuddhiya sabbe sankhara dukhati jadai paiyai pasati ath nibandite dukhe samagho bisuddhiya sabbe dhamma anattati jadai paiyai pasati ath nibandite dukhe samagho bisuddhiya so this is the you can say vipassana so this is the difference between samatha and vipassana
Uh, ah, yes, and so uh, the, uh, the difference between sati and pitaka. Uh, pitaka is uh, always uh, 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 first genre. Pitaka uh, is uh, uh, how. Uh, le uh, let me. Pitaka is the initial application of minds towards the object. There are two terms, bitak and bichar. Bitak is a, suppose there is a sound, there is a ringing of the bell. So when our mind goes that what has happened, where from where it is ringing. So ringing of the bell is called as bitak. It has been defined that whenever initial application of a mind towards the object is called as bitak. It is also called as applied thought. Applied thought is the English translation of a bitaka. That whenever our thought is being applied, that from where this sound or any thing has or any event has happened, this is called as bitaka. It has been defined as alambane chitasa abhiniropan lakhanoti bitako. Abhiniropan means that it is the initial application of minds towards the object. Bichar is sustaining of mind towards the object. Alambane chitasa anumanjan lakhanoti bicharo. That whenever with the vibration of the sound, that there are two, three examples, the difference between bitak and bichar. That uh, ringing of the bell is called as bitak and vibration of the sound is called as bichar. When a bird wants to fly in the sky, Flapping of the wing is called as bitak, and coming into a sky is called as bichar. So there are two, three examples which have been given by Acharya Buddha Ghos in the text Atasalni, commentary of Damasangani. So this is the bitak. Regarding the sati, mindfulness, there is a sati pathana sutta in which Buddha says that ekaino ayam maggo sattanam visuddhiya. Nibbanasya sachi kriyai jaditam chattaro sati pathana kayanupasthana, vedranupasthana, chittanupasthana and dhammanupasthana. So Buddha says that sati or mindfulness is just like it is the only path for the realization of a state of eternal bliss, nibbana. And they are four in number, kayanupasthana, vedranupasthana, chittanupasthana and dhammanupasthana. Buddha has defined mindfulness just like a doorkeeper. Sati dwariko bieti badami. Oh monks, I call mindfulness or sati just like a dwarpal or dwariko as a doorkeeper. As a doorkeeper does not allow any, any undesirable person to enter into the house in the same way a mindfulness does not allow any undesirable immoral factors to enter into the surface of mind. So they are four in number, kainupassana, anupassana means awareness, anupassana, anu means that which follows, passa means visualizing or you can say being alert. Being alert again and again related with the 32 parts of our body, all the activities related with the body is called as kayanupassana. And vedranupassana, that is the awareness related with the five kinds of our feeling. That is the sukha vedana, somanas vedana, dukha vedana, domanas vedana, and upekha vedana. This is called as vedana nupassana. Third is chitta nupassana. Chittanupassana, that being awareness related with the 89 kinds of consciousness and 52 types of psychic factors. All our 89 types of consciousness have been divided into 21 types of kusala, 12 types of kusala, 36 types of vipaka chit, 20 types of kriya chit. All together, there are 89 types of consciousness. So, related, being aware of all these 89 types of consciousness and 52 types of psychic factors, this is called a chittanupassana. 
and dhammanupassana that is the being aware of all the four noble truth eightfold path law of dependent origination all the dhammas or teachings of the buddha this is called as dhammanupassana so this is the mindfulness is it clear Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Any more question if you have? Mumuru, do you have any question? Uh, so far I'm okay. I'm reading the material again. So. Uh, you go through the all the reading material. If you feel any difficulty, I will meet again on next uh, Wednesday. We can... Uh, Uh, discuss all the questions of whatever you have. You just just go through the ten uh, titles of our uh, uh, which we have already discussed recently. So if you feel any difficulty, then again we will discuss in this our uh, interaction uh, uh, because our courses are over. So if you have any question, then we can discuss the things. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So, any more question? If you have, Hiko, you have Hiroko. Any question? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. I don't have a question so far. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Kiko, do you have any question? Uh. Uh, uh yes uh, uh and doctor said uh, um, to about uh, the democracy of uh to sanga mm. uh and uh you said uh, uh, sanga is the uh, uh, most uh, um, uh, oldest uh, uh like a commun communist party and uh, so sharing the uh, uh, every a member of the sh sharing each other mm -hmm. uh, then so uh priest uh priest uh, most important and uh, the philosophy of the sangha and uh, uh, against the uh, uh, Social uh, 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 sangha uh, 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 between the sangha and the uh, ordinary social and the most important uh, philosophy of the sangha. Uh, uh, what uh, influence uh, to the uh, oldest Indian so uh, social? Uh, whenever we uh, let us discuss what is called as sangha, hmm. sangha is a, there are three words. Uh, if you go through the sangha, uh, sam plus han dhatu and ra pratyay. Ra is the hmm. suffix. There are three letters there. Sam means uh, properly. Han dhatu, han barb, is means to kill, and ra is a suffix. Which makes it a noun, sangha. Through these words, it becomes a sangha. Sangha is the name of the assembly of the persons who have come together after discriminating all the factors related with the caste, color, creed, anything. All the discriminating factors they have removed and they have come together in one community. Or in one group, in one assembly, that is called as assembly. So Buddha was a very democratic person, and he followed the democratic in nature uh, in the organization of the sangha. And first of all, there will be no any caste system in uh, our uh, sangha because even a sudra or a brahman who has been converted into Uh, a monk or a sramaner, they all are equal. There is no any caste system in our sangha also. 
and for lay people also buddha also says that chattaro banna sam samahanti all the people are equal no one is inferior or superior whosoever thinks that one is superior or one is inferior he is in gross to with papakam ditti gatam he is associated with the evil faults so buddha says that uh, there must be no any caste color creed in the sangh also and if you go through the democratic nature of bachians people of the baisali they were also following the democratic nature also and buddha followed the same democratic nature in our sangh also and there will be no any property to the monk and whosoever there were only four requisites for a monk and nun that is the chivara pindapat senasana and putti mutt bhesaj parikhar these are the only four requisites which a monk or nun can possess otherwise all the property belongs to the sangha not to any individual monk or any nun so all the decisions are being taken together by in a democratic nature no uh, any rule or any you can say regulations were uh, decided by anyone but all of the persons who were belonging to the assembly or sangh they decided unanimously to adopt this the 227 rules for the monks and 311 rules for the nuns so there was a democratic nature in the sangh also and there was no any feeling related with the caste color creed and anything in the sangh and for the lay people also but also says that all the people are equal and even in sutni path in vasal sutta also or in खुदक पाठ ऑल्सो वी आर हैविंग दैट न जच्चा होती ब्राह्मणो न जच्चा होती वसलो कमुना होती ब्राह्मणो कमुना होती वसलो दैट बाई टेकिंग बर्थ इन ए लो कास्ट और इन ए सुप्रियर कास्ट वन डज नॉट बिकम लो और सुप्रियर बट बाई कम और बाई एक्शन ए पर्सन इज द वसल और विसल लो और ए मैन बिकम्स ब्राह्मण और द सुप्रियर वन सो दिस हैज बीन सेड इन आवर टेक्स्ट आल्सो एनी मोर सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द सोशल डायमेंशंस आल्सो इन आवर क्लास इफ यू गो थ्रू वी विल डिस्कस अगेन रिगार्डिंग द पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम आल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड दैट व्हाट आर द ड्यूटीज ऑफ ए king how he has to behave with our people of the country what are the ten duties of a royal king uh, we had a discuss das raj dharma uh, for a king and uh, what what are the system of the good governance we had discussed that uh, what uh, there are ten types of uh, rules to meant for a king for the good governance also it has been given in our pali text also so we had discussed in our previous class also and i have given you the reading materials also so you go through and if you feel any difficulty we can discuss the again okay any more question if you do not have then uh, we can meet together again on next wednesday otherwise okay. if you feel that on this topic i may give another lecture on the next wednesday you let me know uh, uh, one day before so that i can join on the same topic okay 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 then uh, take care of uh, yourself uh, and if you have uh, still some questions we can continue otherwise in the next uh, week we can meet together again
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Kiko, do you have any more question? Uh, no, I have no question. No. Okay, okay. Thank so you for detailing. You go through uh, you go through the reading materials and in the next week we are meeting together again. And if you have some questions, again we'll meet together again, discuss the things. Okay, goodbye. Okay. Take care. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you Good very night. much. Good night. Professor. Thank you very Good much. Night. Good night. Good night.